as I have already been entreated, commanded, not quite bribed, uh, to perform this specifically for Her Majesty. Uh, you, have, you have already heard the, the tale of my first event. This incident happened at my third event, the Spring Crown, mid Crown of 1980. I think it was AS4, still AS-14. And I knew very little about fighting, but I was watching the tournament anyway. And I saw this really bizarre thing, and I asked around, is this really as bizarre as it seems? <laughs> oh, yes. It has never happened before. And uh, at the time, Lord Zartrick Vance Vanson, mm -hmm. who now goes by Master Bubba God Gunson, uh, suggested, you know, somebody should write a song to this, to the theme from MASH. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? So As I did. Does. And within, and then this, this reached the hand, the ears of Duke Master Moonwell Stark Otterson, who made it his theme song for quite a while. And it spread and it spread and it spread <coughs> until 10 years later, the, their majesties, um, Telemar and Iceland, held a special Tuesday court in Traeger Sea to honor the ambassadors from Loshak, oh who had been entrusted, entrusted with gifts to give to the Midrom crown. Oh and when the, one of the ambassadors from Loshak came up to me in the hall and said, well, I noticed you sang at the feast. You must be a minstrel. Can, everybody in Loshek wants to know, there's this song that we think <laughs> comes from the mid-realm, and we don't know who wrote it or where it came from. Do you know anything about the origins of the death of Corwin Dragonstar? Okay. And I said, boy, did you just hit pay dirt. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, here are first the first two verses, the original two verses, and if I my voice fails on the high notes in the chorus, please ignore it. <laughs> Was at the mid realm summer crown that word went up and word went down the core wind dragon star would fight to win the throne with skill and might. <laughs> The day progressed with grief and mirth as valiant fighters fell to earth. The quarterfinals they drew nigh, and Corwin staged his mighty try. But suicide is painless, it brings on many changes, and makes some entertainment for the mob. <laughs> Brave Corwin turned to face his foe, the gallant Tonquatois, and so they both did honor, took their stands. The marshals moved, the fight began. Then Corwin moved with speed and skill, determined to achieve his will. He snapped a shot to poor Tonk's head, but Corwin took the blow instead. So suicide is painless, poor Corwin, he stayed brainless. We guess he didn't really want the job. <laughs> so as I said, this made the rounds. And for about seven years, and then um, in the fall crown of 1987, <laughs> there were two masters of arms in the finals for crown. One was Corwin, the other was Einar Hawkinson, mm -hmm. who happens to be my husband, <laughs> which makes this even funnier. And it was a long, hard-fought finals. And Einar finally fell, and the first thing Corwin did, since his lady wife was out of town and not at the event, was to run up to me and say, my first royal command to you is to write a third verse to that song. <laughs> <laughs> so here it is. 
But then there came another crown, and when the finals came around, two stalwart Vikings took the field to see which one the throne would wield. Twas in that last deciding bout that both contestants chickened out. So Corwin aimed for his own head, but Einar took the <laughs> <laughs> so if the suicide is painless, for Corwin he was tainest, but Einar didn't really want the job. <laughs> and that is the saga of the saga of the death of Corwin Dragon. <laughs>